Ryan taking over Loon Live tonight from Matt. Um, he's still here, so feel free to heckle him. Uh, we got a couple of flies for you guys tonight. Uh, one of them is this little guy here, the uh, little hot shot comet variation. That's a great uh, salmon fly for us, or salmon fly for us, not a salmon fly, but a salmon fly for us. Um, here in Oregon, our salmon season is heating up, so everybody's getting excited for those anadromous fish. Um, then we'll be tying my Mr. Bait Fish or Master Bait Fish. Um, this guy here is a great striper fly or big trout fly or whatever else you want to eat a big fly. So um, yeah, we'll get started with the, uh, the Comet first. All right, so we're gonna start off with a standard spay hook. Uh, what I prefer doing is right out of the gate come in and pinch that barb down. Number one, so I don't forget it. Number two, um, once I get all this work done, I don't want to break that hook off by pinching it and breaking it with a pair of pliers. So pinch it first, the hook breaks, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, we'll be using Ultra 140 thread, uh, fluorescent hot, super hot pink. Uh, for me and salmon, the more fluorescent you can get, the better. Um, so I just start towards the front and then I'm going to build up a little bit of a thread base on the return, so where that spay hook comes back around, I'll build up a little bit of a thread base, not going crazy, and uh, come in here with some double pupil lead eyes from Hairline, and these guys are my favorite eyes for any, uh, any lead eye, actually. So I'm just going to do a bunch of wraps one way, and then I'm actually going to turn it my fingers and do a bunch of wraps the other way and uh, for me this is the best way to lock it down and it's really quick and easy Let's get the vice over just yeah there we go. Cool. yeah it's really quick and easy and uh, it allows those things to really tighten up you don't have to do all those crazy wraps after that so your eyes are on there they're not going to move I'm just going to build a small thread base down to the back and I don't care if it's gaps or anything like that, it's going to get filled in anyways. I'm going to go back down almost to the uh, to the bend where it starts to bend, so a little bit past the point here. I'm going to tie in my rabbit. Uh, once again, sticking with the hot pink color. Uh, this is black barred, so a little bit of contrast. Nothing too crazy. Uh, I've already cut it into a small section. I want it to be about the length of the hook. So What, 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 uh, what rabbit is that? So this is the uh, black barred rabbit strips in fluorescent pink. Uh, hairline dubbing, as always, making some great stuff. So bring it in here. Fly fishing schnauzer asks, can we adjust so the comments aren't in front? You can sneak the switch the comments, dude. Uh. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get that rabbit strip on there. Now, uh, right away, because this is tied kind of up on the hook shank, right. it has a tendency to foul on you. So here's a little tip to prevent that. Uh, after going through a run and thinking you've got just the juiciest fly on there, you got the right sink tip, uh, and you're not hooking fish and you get it back and it looks like a big bowl of spaghetti, let's fix that problem right out of the gate. So I'm going to bring it back this way, do a few thread wraps right behind it, and all this does is kick it up just enough um, to where that's not going to happen. So you don't have to worry about that grabbing now we're ready for this step here. Do you ever use uh, UV resin to stabilize that rabbit? Yeah, you definitely can. Um, so I've often taken the bottom part of this strip and just done a little bit of UV resin and it just stiffens it just enough to get past that hook point and you never have to worry about it. Um, I'm lazy, so we're gonna skip that step. Let's see. Uh, favorite fly for the Salmon River or anything like that? Salmon River, I'm assuming New York. Um, you know, it doesn't doesn't matter too much. I think if, if it's a salmon, uh, you need to get in front of them. And for me, it's a fluorescent color in front of them. So uh, the fluorescent pink, chartreuse, fluorescent blue is an underrated color. Uh, so that's kind of the steps there. So next step we're going to do is a little bit of wire. This stuff is large. It's heavy duty. Um, I really don't care if it's fine. I want to make sure this thing is going to withstand a salmon, especially you know a big toothy chum or something like that. Those guys can get pretty aggressive and toothy. So I'm going to come in here, 
when I tie wire in, I want to kind of match it with my return. Uh, let's see if I can adjust this a little bit. So that way you don't have a gap in there. So the return comes around backwards. It's going to match up with your wire. And uh, not that it matters too much, but it gives you peace of mind when you're tying this thing in. And the, and the return, uh, you're talking about the return eye of the hook. Yeah, so on all traditional spay hooks, you're going to have this taper. It's going to thin out. And it's going to return backwards. So it's not like a normal um, hook that the bin goes all the way around. This guy, you actually have to tie it in, and uh, it's called the return of a spay hook. So whenever I talk about the return, that's what we're talking about. So you got your wire towards the back. Uh, we've got a little bit of a bump here, but I'll show you a little tip to kind of fix that. We're going to build up a little bit of a thread base, but I'm not going to go crazy with it. Well, this, uh, some guys are asking if they could fish this comet. They may be in different colors for big browns. What do you think? Oh, totally. Um, so tie this guy in a sculpin pattern. So do your black barred olive rabbit strip. Um, instead of doing holographic silver tinsel in here, use a holographic brown or, or something like that. And then in the collar, I use uh, the same step. So it's the exact same fly, but this is actually a really good sculpin pattern. And uh, we use it for browns up here in Oregon, and I'm sure anywhere there's a brown trout, he can eat that fly just the same. So now we're going to start with uh, the flash body, and I'm going to use a large holographic tinsel silver. So um, do you steal those hair clips from your girlfriend? I do. Like my <laughs> hair clips? It's a good hack, guys. These are actually for my beard. You can't tell, but they're for my beard. It keeps everything organized. <laughs> Firehole, what's up, brother? All right, so we're going to tie this in. I have a pretty big strip here. Um, when Whit finishes where it's at. It's not even out yet. <laughs> <laughs> soon, soon. <laughs> so I'm going to tie a few of these uh, few wraps in here. And then what I like to do is actually fold this back over um, and then crank it down a little bit more. And that's just going to ensure that that thing never comes off. Um, which there's another step in here that I used to do this as kind of a redundancy before we had all these fancy UV resins. Uh, but now that we have that, it's kind of a redundancy. So we're going to go what's called the there and back uh, routine. So we're going to go there, and then we're going to come back. So nice and easy. And I like, some people like to do the rotation with the uh, device. I like my hands on because I can put a little more tension or, or drag it away, especially when I get to this bump to try to make it look as pretty as possible. Uh, so a question came in, Let's we had it. a response. He wants to know where the whip finisher is at. Um, it'll be out in a very shortly, early November, but uh, this gentleman, JMEG51 asks, do you tie trout nymphs? And if so, what is your favorite trout nymph? Ooh, I do tie trout nymphs. Um, not a lot, but I do. My favorite one is like a rubber leg pattern, a Pat's rubber leg. Um, here in Central Oregon and Bend, we have the Deschutes, and the Deschutes is pretty world famous for their stonefly hatch. And uh, yeah, you don't leave home without a couple dozen of those bad boys. So we're just going to tie this off with a few wraps, get in here and chop it. I don't care if there's a little tag in because I will wrap more wraps over it to just to ensure that it's not going anywhere. Argentina. So, in the house. oh nice. Welcome yeah. from Argentina. All right, so now we're gonna do the wire uh, opposite of which way you wrapped your tinsel. So this is just a securing wrap. Uh, once again, like I said, when I before all these fancy UV resins and uh, I was tying this fly, we didn't have anything to coat it with, so you had to do this wire just to ensure that you weren't gonna have your fly come apart on the first salmon that, that decided to eat it. So um, kind of a redundancy, but I think it looks really cool once you get it done with the UV resin um, to make it look pretty nice. Get in here. I want to make sure this wire is really secure. And then come in here and do the little helicopter. Spin around a bunch of times and the thing should pop off right there. Or you can use your really good sharp loon scissors and ruin them and buy a lot more scissors. Whatever you guys want to do. Um, so this is a variation of the Hot Shot Comet from Tim Fox, one of my fly tie mentors, which is a variation of the original Comet, which is like one of the standard steelhead flies uh, originating from Northern California. So uh, it's kind of a variation of a variation of a variation. Fly Machine says he's uh, 
he's been crushing it on Rainbow Warriors. Nice, that is a good fly. Um, so with this pattern, it was originally done, the hot shot had some uh, holographic flash and it was tied in like this weird tube stuff and you had to pick it out like crazy. And it was really effective and it was cool, but it took a lot of time. And myself being the lazy tire that I am, I was like, man, I can just take this UV polar chenille and, uh, and make that kind of wispiness to it, a little bit of movement, a lot of flash, without having to do all that. So as I started tying more and more with it, um, I realized that, wow, I can take two colors, spin them, um, and make it even more flashy and kind of translucent and cool. So that's what we're gonna do today. So I'm gonna grab a small chunk of silver. So, so obviously uh, I'm not gonna ask you to give away where you're fishing. Oh yeah. But so with this fly fishing for salmon, say you know your chum, silvers, whatever it is um, that you're finding in the rivers, what kind of water are you targeting this fish in? What are you looking for for these guys out there who maybe want to get out there and do it? Great question. So um, chums are easy. You'll see where the chums are, right? You'll see them thrashing around, and, and it's really cool. They might be in a deep hole somewhere. Um, they might be in a tail. You'll see them. It's it's so easy. Um, same thing with cohos. You can see cohos in certain areas. For cohos, I love fishing like back eddies. So if I can find either a slow spot where maybe a side channel once was during high water, then now in lower water, just kind of a soft bit of water, those uh, coho will stack up in there. Uh, for kings, I fish the same fly for kings. Um, I like fishing kind of big steelhead water for kings. So uh, stuff that might be a little too strong for uh, steelhead, I can definitely fish and catch kings with uh, the same fly, maybe a heavier sink tip. So uh, yeah, it does vary quite a bit for each, uh, each river and each uh, species, but it's kind of the breakdown. Chums are everywhere for the most part, um, and you can kind of see those guys working. Cohos are like softer water. Kings, I do enjoy big water. They will hold in much stronger and deeper water. Um, so I usually fish like T18 when I'm fishing for kings. Um, and that's up here in Oregon. It changes everywhere. So, so what's what's your, uh, so tackle wise, what's your setup for this game? Yeah, so um, depending on where you're at, I really enjoy fishing smaller water for those salmon. Um, so I'm gonna fish uh, like a nine weight, eight or nine weight switch rod. And uh, I call them baby space. So you're gonna use your baby spay rod with like an airflow uh, scout head or something like that, something short and compact. And uh, you can be in the tightest quarters and still make your cast. And even with that short you know, switch rod with that uh, scout head, I'm able to turn over 10 feet of T17 or T18 or T whatever you wanna throw. So it's really dense, gets down fast, and uh, you're in the zone. Guys wanna fish this thing for redfish, what do you think? Oh, do it. Tie it on a saltwater hook, send me a picture. Uh, <laughs> Jeremiah Sleeperspay at Gmail. I want to see it. I want to see this hanging out of a redfish mouth. Um, so I'm going to come back just a little farther on this. And ooh, I forgot the next step. So we're going to back up. See, you start talking about salmonids, and this is what happens. <laughs> so, a really important step, and the reason I tie this now for salmon uh, is because I can make it bomb proof. Um, yeah, so by making it bomb proof, I can fish this fly all day long and never have to worry about uh, this thing getting destroyed. I'm fishing 20 pound maxima for them, so I'm definitely not going to lose them. So, all right. I think people are worried about me over here. They think I have a hangnail, so that's why I can't tie. Oh, uh, that, that might be true. I've got like 50 of them, so bear with me. Uh, uh, let's see. A beautiful fly for sea trout and brown trout some specks, like speckled trout, saltwater, um, and polar chenille. Yeah, that's two colorways of polar chenille. Yeah, so we'll get back to this little deal in a second. Um, I forgot a major step. So, a little UV resin here. Uh, what we want to do is coat this uh, body here. So, chum salmon, or dog salmon are the, as they're known, are called that because it literally looks like a dog's mouth. They have just huge teeth in them. Um, they're crazy looking fish. So you catch a chum on this thing, his teeth get in here in between the wire, rip this thing to shreds, and not that it won't fish, it probably will catch fish, but at the same time, I like fishing really good looking flies, and so I wanna make sure that's not gonna happen. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna give it a little UV treatment. So I'm gonna get in here and 
The nice thing about having this wire is it kind of gets into those ribs, and I'm going to come through and just kind of smear it around. Um, it'll start working its way down, and I can easily move this stuff around. Uh, I'll do top and bottom usually. Did you notice that you were wearing a, a beer shirt with, and you have a beard? Um, you know, Loon gives me royalties because this is mimicked after my beard. A um, <laughs> little fun fact, beard fact of the day. So once you got that coated, I'm going to move it around just to make sure it doesn't, you know, congregate in one area. I want it to be evenly spaced around. I'm going to come in with the UV light, hit it, and cure this stuff pretty quick. All right. So we are bomb-proof now. So this thing can go through a nuclear explosion. It's going to be roaches, Twinkies, and this fly. So now we're going to move on to our Polish Neil. So that was a uh, UV thin that you used. Yes, UV thin. You can use thick or flow or whatever you want. I often use fluorescing flow, uh, just because it gives it that much more pop and shine. Uh, but anything you have, any of the resins, I like thin or flow because it can get in all these nooks and crannies, and you're not building up a ton of bulk. Uh, so I want this thing to be kind of sparse because it will sink a lot faster that way. So you're going to tie in your one color of chenille here and then you're tying your second color so I like the silver of course we have the silver body um, I like pink of course we have pink everything else so we're going to mix these two together and spin them so we've got our gator grip locked and loaded right here um, so I'm going to make sure all these fibers are kind of sticking away from each other. Give it a little pull. All right. I'm going to kind of fluff these things. So Brian, make sure they're kind of sticking out. Brian Wise says, "Pops, pop and shine, mix and crannies." <laughs> he likes it. That's awesome. Fly fishing the Ozarks, Brian Wise. Perfect. <laughs> so when I said nooks and crannies, I was honestly thinking about a, a English, English muffin for sure. Uh, being the fat kid that I am, I was thinking about <laughs> breakfast food. Um, so you got both of these guys, we're just going to spin it. Uh, once I do about four or five spins, I'm going to come in with my uh, dubbing brush and pick it out. If you don't do this, they'll all start matting together and then you get this one candy cane looking rope that has no fluff on it and uh, just don't do that. Don't do that sure guy. I'm pretty sure people only like fluffy candy canes. So you got to have the fluffy candy cane here. So once you've done a few more, you give it another spin, and by spinning it, you're gonna make these a lot more dense. So usually this stuff has just some random fibers in it. By spinning this stuff, you can make it very dense. Um, so if you guys are asking about sculpin patterns, do this with like the UV copper and then uh, olive or something like that. So it's just an awesome colorway and it looks sweet and you catch a ton of fish on it, guaranteed. So now that you have this fluffy brush. We're going to move some fibers back. Um, just kind of taming these guys a little bit. There you go. I'm going to give it a little bit of a pinch and that's going to help it stay that way. So as you start to rotate this, the two pieces make kind of a cord and so you want to stack one right next to each other. Uh, if you start going too many gaps, it'll kind of get loose on you. And uh, in the words of Tim Fox, nobody likes saggy pants, so don't do it. So we're going to make a couple more wraps here. We don't have to go crazy um, with this stuff. We'll do maybe three wraps. Pull off enough chenille for like 50 wraps, but we're just going to do three. All right, that looks good. So we got the three. Spins fluff, crowd goes wild. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come in here, give it a wrap or two, lock it down. Pull it back, do a couple more, and then get in here nice and tight. And I'm sure you guys already do this, but I use my finger to block my thread. So I'm going to have to cut through my finger to cut my thread. So whenever you get into tight stuff like this, use your finger. Block it off. Sacrifice yourself. All right, so now that we have this, before we start going through with our brush, um, make sure you have a few more securing wraps. Uh, after a few beers, it always happens. I do one wrap on there and I think I'm invincible and just rip everything out with the first brush stroke. So come in here, make sure this stuff is wrapped around pretty good. 
Now I'm going to go this way with it, and that's going to pull out all those fibers. There you go. Now that's looking fuzzy. And now I can come back through and pull these fibers back. So we've got movement here. We've got this body, but it's super lightweight. It's all synthetic materials on the front. So other than this big rabbit strip, it's not too crazy to, to cast. So come in here, pull some fibers back. There you go. We're just going to do some... Perhaps to make it look pretty. So the next step is going to be a collar. Um, you can do hackle. I prefer schloppen. Number one, because I love saying schloppen. But number two, because it's really thick and webby. So you have more movement with that thick webby stuff than with the spiky hackle. So I'm going to pull out my trusty pack of schloppen. I'm going to find some longer fibers. Um, I'm okay with this thing being just a little longer. See, when you've had the same pack of schlopping for a little over a year, you start to lose all the best ones, so you have to do some searching. Who is this it? This might be a runner-up, guys. We don't have the winner yet. Posh Craven says it's fun to say. Schlopping. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my favorite word. Schlopping. Yeah. All right, that might do it. All right, so we got our slopping right here. So as always, I like to prep my feathers. So S C H L A P P E N. There you go. Um, and roasted. <laughs> so this stuff down here at the bottom that looks like a chicken with mange. We're gonna pull this stuff off. We don't need this. Clear it out. And we're gonna move. So this is even a thicker part of the stem here. So I'm gonna move some more of these feathers off. Or barbules. Um, all right. It was very scientific. You like that? I was impressed. All right. So now I've got the meat and potatoes and kind of what I want to do. Um, this stuff here is a bit long for me, so I'm going to come in here and prep even more of this. So when you get your feather tied in, it should be exactly what you want to use, give or take a little bit. Um, so with this guy, I want to have kind of a little bit of bulk up here. So I'm going to leave some of these small guys on and move my way back to the bigger feathers. And I'm going to tie this in by pulling these fibers back, moving some forward, getting that little X where you see both pieces that come together. Now you can come in here and do a couple wraps. So you're using the, uh, the thinner front feathers kind of as like a foundation to build. Apart. Yeah, so as, you, as you're tying a collar, um, it's going to be the front part that's going to kind of create your, your water pushing element to the fly. Um, so by using smaller fibers stacked up on bigger fibers, you keep building up and making it a really cool um, kind of slowed back look with support underneath. So tie this in, and once again, we're going for big toothy critters. We don't want this fly to get beat up. So I'm going to take my feather, the tip of this slopping feather, and pull it back a couple wraps, lock that thing down. She ain't moving. Um, so you can come in here and give it a little pull and it should pop right off. You also learn how well you've tied that in. If it just pops right out, you might need to cut more wraps. If you get a crazy, unruly mohawk like this guy has, you can come in here and just a little trim there. All right, so now that we've got this going, we're going to come in and start wrapping. Now, once again, I want to pull these fibers back like this here, give them a little pinch, and this is going to kind of tame those feathers. It's going to do what I want them to do. Um, another trick is coming in here with your scissors. Um, Wild Urban Fly Fisher says that fly is obviously broken. You need to send it into him for testing immediately. Sounds good. <laughs> How about you come out to Oregon? We'll test it together. We'll go fish this thing. Guaranteed to catch fish as long as I'm fishing it. Um, so we're going to start wrapping this slopping feather. And I want these to be one right next to each other. So don't make any gap. We don't have a lot of space here to begin with. So we're going to come in here and one right next to each other. Each wrap, I'm, I'm moving these fibers back. I'm making sure that these things don't start doing their own thing. Um, they are my feathers. I'll tell them what to do. So each wrap, one right next to each other, bringing it up. And just really slowly, methodically pulling these fibers back. 
Once you've got that wrapped in, a few more in here. Come on. Once you have that cranked in there pretty good, come in, give it a close chop. And now I'm going to come in and give it a few more good wraps, just making sure nothing's going to move around. All right. There is your comet. So we're going to do a quick whip finish here. Towards the front, I'm okay having, on my steel it flies like intruders, I don't want this little bump in front. But for comets, I think it looks really cool to have that little nose um, on there, especially with this fluorescent pink thread. So do that one whip finish because we're going to coat this once again with the UV resin. So gone are the days of having to do like three whip finishes on your fly to make sure it's not going to come apart. Um, do one, coat it, you're good to go. In clap 10 says that's prettier than my mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so get in here with your uh, thin, and I'm just going to put a small base of this stuff on, and I want this to kind of soak in just a little bit. I'm going to leave it there for just a second. Matt Ever says you need more pink. I'll try next time. And uh, hit that with a light. Looks tasty. And what size hook? So this guy here is a, a one. Um, so that's gonna be my standard salmon hook is the one to one knot. Um, if you dropped it for steelhead, where would, would you go? Oh, you can tie this thing for summer steelhead in like size sixes. So instead of using these uh, lead eyes, use uh, bead chain, um, use kind of natural colors. And I crush steelhead on the Deschutes with the old school Comet. Um, if you want to feel really classy, get one of those fiberglass two-handers and uh, fish a Comet. You feel really cool with old Pafluga reels. All right, so we're going to do some on the bottom. And once again, I want to make sure any thread that's exposed is going to be completely covered. So when these fish grab it, no matter how aggressive the grab is, I know that my fly is going to be absolutely fine at the end. So you've got your pretty smooth head there. All your fibers kind of moving back that way. A lot of translucent. When this stuff gets wet, you'll see through to the body. Of course, your tail is just going to wiggle like crazy back here and just make those salmon so excited they can't resist it. So, so a challenge has been thrown down. Let's hear it. They want to see actually how fast you really tie. Not, not very fast. <laughs> uh, is that about full speed? <laughs> no, that wasn't about full speed. I tie a little faster than that. Um, anyways, that's a comment. You tie 100 of them, you get kind of quick at them. So um, that's it, a little bit of uh, barring on the back end to give it a little contrast. But my salmon box consists of like these things in three colors and you know, maybe a couple other random flies. So this is the Annihilator Comet, uh, just a hotshot comet variation. The originals uh, are often tied with a lot of craft fur. I think the rabbit, especially the barred rabbit, just gives it so much more uh, kind of look in the water, that contrast. Of course, rabbit keeps its shape a little bit long, better than, than craft fur. So that's, that's it right there. All right. We're moving from salmons to stripers. Good question. Sergio asks if you can also add some, uh, like some custom like rubber legs, something like that. Oh, I'm sure you can. Um, there's a fly, uh, oh, what's that fly called? The rubber legs that comes off the back end. Oh gosh, can't remember the name. Um, squid row? Not the squid row. The squid row. The deuce wiggalo. Deuce wiggalo. So the deuce wiggalo <laughs> kind of looks like that. It's got a, a little butt of uh, rabbit. It's got a bunch of rubber legs in it. So yeah, I'm sure it'd crush. And uh, yeah, just the more wiggles, the better. So throw rubber legs in there. Make it a variation of a variation of a variation, and call it good. So yeah, throw rubber legs in there, or whatever else you want. So a guy comes in and he goes, uh, Kay Hamby, Hamby asks, uh, does Jeremiah know how to spay cats? Uh, I think that might be Kelly Hamby uh, here in Bend. And uh, no, I don't. I can't spay cast. But with the name, I just hope it's going to happen. <laughs> our, our next fly is going to be uh, this little guy here. So I wanted something that had that kind of cool taper that you see in bait fish. So thick up front 
and then tapers to almost nothing in the back. And by doing that, you actually get a lot of movement. Um, so as we progress through this fly, I'll kind of show you the steps and why we're doing those steps. Uh, and then the color combo with the chartreuse and fluorescent blue. When this gets wet, it is the juiciest of the juicy. So um, you do have the, uh, the grizzly hackle in the back to kind of give it some, uh, like a lateral line look to it. So a bunch of neat little things that I decided, you know what, I'm gonna put in as much bait fishy stuff as I can into one fly and this is what came out. So I think on the recipe list, I said that the tail was uh, cashmere goat. I think it's Icelandic sheep, but I'm not positive on my four-legged species of what fur that is. All right. I'll tell you. Matt, what is this? Icelandic sheep. It's not All right. Cashmere. It's too thick in the base. So this is Icelandic sheep. <laughs> um, also makes a great little flavor saver patch if you guys are ever wanting to do that. Um, I take the black and stick it in the back of my hat like a little rat tail. Very multi-purpose uh, fly tie material here. So I'm going to switch over thread away from the, uh, the fluorescent pink to good old Beavis gel spun. So Beavis is right now my favorite thread. Um, and gel spawn, you can do just about anything with this. So uh, be careful, it's strong enough to actually cut materials. So get in here, make your little thread base, give it a chop. You don't have razor scissors. These are the best for cutting gel spawn stuff. So uh, right away what we're gonna do is build a thin thread base, moving it to the back. Um, so quick and easy all the way to the back. I'm going to go back to just before it starts bending, um, right yeah. in there, almost to the uh, to the barb. Everybody's, everybody's liking it. Uh, fly Machine, I don't know Mike, but Mike needs to live stream on his own rivers. <laughs> Everybody says, so sick, nice beard. Thank you, thank you. What um, kind of product do you use in there? Anything? Any so, <laughs> only the finest from France. Um, <laughs> nope, this is all natural, believe it or not. No, uh, no toupee covers or anything like that. So we've got our Icelandic sheep here, and as you can tell, this stuff wants to move. Um, so this is going to be the tail. And I'm going to come in here and pull off a decent amount. So remember, this is your body. It has a nice taper to it. So come in here, give it a chop. Spencer wants to know how you're doing. I told him you were great. I am great. I'm really good. Matt's been at my house for the past couple nights, so it's been a great time. So if we were to just tie this in right now, you have a bunch of fluff here. Don't do that. Um, come in here, brush this stuff out, get all this under fur out, because um, that is going to make your fly a lot lighter. It's not going to trap as much water. It's also going to let this thing move like it wants to move. This baby was born to dance. Let it dance. So come in here. We're going to make this thing much of this stuff off as we can. Now I want this guy to be uh, right about that five inch mark. Um, so for me, I know on a Dyna King vise, I can just bring it back to a certain point. Okay, there's my mark um, and just make sure it's perfect. So come in here, that's about where I want it. Give it a little pinch. And when you're doing this, make sure you're pinching pretty hard. If not, this material tends to roll over on the hook uh, we want this to be right on top. Um, I'll kind of elaborate into that because we want this to be kind of a flat fly. We want it to stack up so it gives it that bait fish look, right? They're not all round. So if you start to encircle this thing, it's not going to look as good as it can. It also doesn't swim as well. So I'll give it a couple wraps here. Make sure this thing is locked in place. Now I'm going to do the same thing I did with that rabbit. So I'm going to do a couple wraps, picking it up. Couple wraps behind here, not a ton. This is already towards the back, but this is just enough to give it a little bit of stability. And I'm gonna come in here and give it a few more wraps just to make sure this thing isn't gonna come off. So now when I cut this stuff, if you cut it straight like this, you're gonna have a step there. So you're gonna be tying, it's gonna drop down, it's gonna keep going. So when you get in here, give it a chop at an angle. So now you have this slow, step down, um, so it's more of a, a ramp instead of a step. So get in here, 
I just do some loose wraps at first, and I'm going to come in and crank it down once I have all those unruly fibers where I want them. All right. So we're not going to go all the way towards the back. Take a couple wraps off. And we're going to tie in our, our lateral scale. So this stuff is going to be uh, a little bit of flash towards the back end. It has this nice crinkle to it. Um, Spencer wants to know if you've ever fished for uh, Atlantic salmon. I have not. Uh, is that an invite? Because I will be there. No, never for Atlantic. I would love to. And I'm not going to bring comments, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so uh, we're going to bring just two pieces of flash off of here. It's not a crazy flashy fly like that, but it does have a lot of kind of internal flash. So chop your two pieces. And this stuff, like I said, has a lot of crinkles to it. So it really refracts light and uh, looks ultra juicy in the water. So we already have our thread wrap in here. So we don't need to put this in and crank more thread wraps down. So one of my favorite tips is to reach over your fly, grab your material, and use your thread wrap that's already in place here to set your material. And I can come up here, find exactly the length I want, and now I'm ready to tie in. So what I like to do is keep it on a V. Let's see if I can show that here. I'm gonna keep it just like this. I'm gonna turn it, and now when I tie this, you're gonna have two coming down each side of the fly. Um, what that helps it do is kind of make a little bit of body for it and doesn't just lay flat. So it makes a little bit more movement here. Also, it looks super cool. Spencer says you're invited. All right, perfect. Where's he at? What's the address? Uh, <laughs> So once you have that in, we're going to tie in our saddle hackles. And like I said, this is more of that lateral line. It does give it some cool body too. Um, so you're going to go grab your best dry fly hackle and uh, pull two of these really fine um, hackles off. And that's what we're going to tie our, uh, our lateral line with. Don't do a super thick one that has like that crazy wedge like you see in a normal like saddle hackle you find in a package. You kind of have to have these long, thin ones um, to make it look like this. So long, thin, cool barring. We've even done like uh, chartreuse uh, of these guys to give it a different color. Uh, so yeah, whatever you have floating around. You have guys copying your technique, tying along. What was that? You guys are tying along with you. Nice, awesome. So. Let's uh, kind of match this up. I'm okay if they're just a little shorter, but I'm gonna keep all the hackles on. So when I do my wrap, I'm gonna keep all those hackles on. And what that does is it prevents it from spinning around. So once again, I wanna kind of create that flatness. So leave those hackles on. Uh, another thing you can do is take, uh, pull this all the fibers off, take the Loon D-bar pliers. They end up just perfectly flat when you close them, and then smush. Uh, the stem and by doing that you know they can't fold on you so whenever I'm tying with like jungle cock that's the technique I do but this I want to crank out a bunch of these I don't want to have to worry about uh, grabbing those pliers every time but when you're using the JC you go above and beyond baby you have a lot to live up to right here you know Britta Fortis was just on I know uh, <laughs> so I'm glad I'm not tying glow bugs today uh, so we're gonna tie these guys in <laughs> Give them a look. These guys look well, fine. Well, challenge after this. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna. I'll pass the the bobbin off to uh, Callie's. So he has a world record for glow bugs. <laughs> All right. So once you crank that thing down, I'm gonna wrap these hackles quite a bit. Um, I want to make sure these don't pop off on me ever. So once you do a few wraps like that, bring them back. A few more wraps over, um, and now you can give them a chop. So. By folding over a stem, it's almost impossible for that thing to pop off. I don't care how bad you snap your back cast, um, that thing will stay locked in place. All right, so. Good, good question here. Would trying to replicate a lateral line be advantageous in a freshwater setting, or is it more important in saltwater? No, so anytime you're, you're looking for a bait fish, right? So there's a few things that I think stand out when you're looking at bait fish, whether that's saltwater or freshwater. Even if you look at like small, baby smallmouth in a creek, they'll have a lateral line as one of their most visible things on their body, and then these just humongous eyes. 
So whenever I think of bait fish, I think of those two things, lateral line and huge eyes. So in this fly, as we start to get towards the front, I'll show you those huge eyes. But yeah, lateral lines, I think, are super important. Um, yeah, so yeah, both fresh and salt water, super important. What, uh, what weight rod are you throwing this on? So my favorite is the, uh, the Winston B3 Plus 8 weight. So that's, that's my stick, and that's what I throw with this thing. And I think I throw like a 250 grain depth charge line. And so I'm getting this down deep, I'm stripping it fast, and usually the takes are so aggressive, uh, it'll dislocate your shoulder, pop your hand out of your wrist, all that good stuff. So we're going to start building our body. Now, keeping with the theme of chenille and spinning it around like crazy, uh, we're going to build a little bit of body by using cactus chenille and polar chenille. So we're going to get our volume by using the cactus chenille, but we get our flash by using the polar chenille. So it's kind of this two-in-one special. Now when I start doing this taper, my first segment is going to be a little bit longer, and then my second segment is going to be a lot shorter. And by doing that, we build up a little more bulk towards the front end. So once again, bait fish, bigger head, smooth taper body, um, that's kind of the ticket there. So whenever you're tying with chenille, make sure you get in here, pull these fibers away, and expose that naked stem there. That way you can tie it on, you never have to worry about that thing pulling fibers out, and it's a much stronger tying point. All right, so we've got that. We don't need a ton of this stuff, so I'm gonna give it a chop. Come in here, and this is uh, UV silver, I believe. Not uh, so much the fly ship, but it's the fly shop, Oregon Tar Hill. But yeah, it's a Confluence fly shop here in Bend. It's autocorrected. Oh, I hate the fly ship. <laughs> um, I hate the autocorrect more <laughs> in life. <laughs> so, Tie this bad boy in. I don't care if there's crazy fibers, it's gonna get wrapped up anyways. So if you're tying a smooth body, a floss body, steelhead fly or something like that, yes, I'm really worried about all these little guys. When I'm tying this and I know it's gonna be covered with chenille, I get a little more lackadaisical. Not gonna be as crazy about it. All right, get that guy tied in. We wanna move up a little over halfway so I don't know, I didn't measure it in millimeters, but it might be two-thirds of the way. So we'll get in here, take our two pieces. We've got cactus and polar, and they're going to come together and make a baby. So let's grab these guys, wrap them together. Once again, our trusty gator grip. Take it, we're going to spin it. And with this guy, I'm not too worried about those uh, fibers getting trapped, but I will, after about five turns, come in with your wife's toothbrush and pull this thing out. The wife's toothbrush is actually the really important part of that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want your toothbrush in there. All right, so now all those fibers got picked out, looking like a fuzzy caterpillar again. All right, so now we're gonna come in here and give it another small twist. So this doesn't have to be crazy tight, um, just enough to make sure all these fibers are kind of melded together and looking pretty. You got them trapped against your hook here. It's crazy. All right, so we're gonna wrap this. Once again, we're gonna make sure all these fibers are going back. You want everything to kind of be swept back. You don't want anything going forward because as you start fishing this thing, it'll start giving it some weird, weird looks. So I want my bait fish to look sleek and sexy like the bait fish they are. So we're gonna keep wrapping this bad boy. I don't know how many wraps, just make it look good. But if you notice in this uh, cactus chenille, you have fibers going forward. If you wrap over it, you're kind of eliminating a lot of that. So make sure you pull those fibers back, give it a wrap. So each wrap, I'm pulling these fibers back and giving it a wrap. The nice thing about doing this is it actually pulls these fibers and kind of sweeps them back by using the material in front of it. So one more I think will be fine. All right, so once you have a few of those, we're going to come in here and we're going to grab this bobbin, do a couple wraps. I'm going to pull these back and do a few more wraps just to lock it in. Now I'm going to come in here and give it a chop. All right, so now we have some craziness going on up here. I'm going to pull this back. Make sure all these things are wrapped down. 
And with gel spun, you can really crank this stuff down. You don't have to be really soft and sweet about it. I mean, get in here and crank down on it. Make sure the stuff isn't going anywhere. So you have all these uh, little bits of flash kind of going back. And as you're fishing, because they're in different uh, lengths, you get these different flash points. So as you're fishing it, you get these cool different flash points. So it gives it this really neat reflection. Um, yeah, it makes those makes the stripe as crazy. So we're gonna make sure this is locked in place and then come in here with our craft fur brush. Uh, Spencer wants to know what's your favorite eight weight reel. Ooh, that's a tough one, man. All over the place. So make sure it's fully machined, make sure it's a sealed drag. Two most important things. Well, third thing, make sure it's made in the US. Uh, those three things are gonna make sure it's a solid reel. Um, yeah, doesn't matter. So I'll fish anything. Oh, large arbor, fourth thing. There you go, large arbor, number four. Um, that way when you are catching some of these big fish and you need to get those, say the fish starts coming towards you, you need to crank in line really fast, that large arbor is gonna help you do that. It also puts less stress on your line. So instead of having it wrapped around a really tight coil, um, it's gonna be a lot, lot more open, and so it's gonna be a lot easier to make those, uh, to make those casts without it coiling. So, craft fur brush here. Um, as we start tying this in, uh, we don't need the whole thing here. So we're gonna do a few wraps uh, with it so I don't need the full 15 inches. We're gonna come in here and make a small chop. All right, there we go, uh, four inches or so. Pull these fibers back, giving you a good core to tie in at. And then we're gonna give it a crank in here. Making sure we're gonna make sure the thing is wrapped in. Don't want it to move around on us. Don't want it to pull out either. So we've got that locked in place. Lift this up and once again, pull all these fibers back. If you need to, you can use some saliva. And make sure it's wet back. I don't need to, I'm just gonna call it good. We're gonna wrap one right next to each other, just like that collar. So this is gonna be like a two stage Intruder style flyer, we have two kind of built up collars. Um, get these guys in, and we might do, I don't know, four or five wraps. I don't know. I've lost count already. <laughs> do one more. All right, so we got this last guy in here, and I'm going to pull these fibers out so I know I'm not trapping a bunch of junk in there. So by pulling these out, you don't have to worry about trapping extra material in there. If you do five wraps and then trap all the rest of the material, it's like wrapping 15 times. So crank that down, pull it back, do a few wraps in front. Now, getting in here, what I like to do is use uh, either the scissor method, which this doesn't typically work with the woven stuff. Um, so I'm going to use either an old pair of scissors or some nippers. Um, I've got some old pair of scissors here. I'm going to come in nice and close. All right, you will have a little point here. That's uh, the dubbing or the crafter brush has a wire in the middle of it. So if you just chop it and leave it there, it will rip thread. Um, so I'm gonna use my thumb, pinch that down, and then wrap it down just to make sure it's not gonna mess with me later. All right, do a few wraps. Get out your old trusty toothbrush again. I'm gonna comb it forward. All right, now I can bring this stuff back. <laughs> shalava like shalava. Exactly. I'm glad somebody got that. <laughs> All right. So this is where shalava comes in. I get my fingers wet a little bit, start pulling these fibers back. So we've got a little bit of body here tapering to a thinner body. And now I'm going to come in with my first color, which will be tachus. So these two colors together are about as sexy as it gets. So when this stuff gets wet, it all kind of combines and makes this really cool look. So we're gonna grab our Ultra Select Craft Fur. And for me, Hairline makes the best craft fur. Um, I don't know what magic fairy they get it from, but it's the best stuff out there. So when you're tying these flies, you, know, you can only make the best fly with the best material. So Trying to make the best fly with junk, it's not gonna happen. 
So get the best material. All right, I'm gonna pull off a big chunk because I know I'm gonna start combing this out and a lot of these smaller fibers are gonna disappear. So grab a big chunk. Good question, the gentleman asked, does your craft fur brush have flash in it? Um, yes, it does. Just the slightest, but you see that little UV? There's a slight hint of UV. Oh yeah, that's the stuff right there. So we're gonna grab this, not towards the very tip here, but I wanna come in right towards the middle and pinch this stuff. So from here down, I'm gonna remove the fluff, but I'm gonna keep all this stuff on this side. So get in here, give it a combing. All right, what this does, it makes it a lot thinner, so I'm not tying in a bunch of junk and making a bunch of bulk that I don't need. It's the under fur. Crap, it's, it's a fake fur, so it's not really under fur. But it's simulated. It's simulated under fur, there you go. I call it junk. It's like robotic under fur. Yeah, robotic blood. Um, so I don't want this to go all the way back because that'll look kind of goofy. So I want this thing to come back just about halfway into my tail. Um, so measure that out, come in here. What you can do is you can either uh, cut it exactly right now or cut it after you're done. I prefer cutting it after I'm done because I can crank on it, I can pull up and give it a quick chop and uh, make sure it's gonna be exactly where I want it. Okay, we have a quick vote. Everybody needs to vote, this is from Alan Peterson. Who has a better beard, Jeremiah or his shirt? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough call I think it's a tie oh come on <laughs> you might have to grow a little bit more burly over here all right <laughs> I'll be back on after winter shirt sure. for a vengeance <laughs> um, somebody came in late asked if it's a musky fly you could use it for musky totally fly. yeah uh, definitely and I've tied these in actually jointed and so you can make an articulated one um, and they can get as big as you want so uh, yeah definitely Musky, pike, I tie them in red for when I never go fish for mako sharks out down in San Diego. But I've got a whole bunch of them whenever I'm ready. All right, so that's our first stage. 50-50 split on you versus the shirt. Oh, come on. I don't know, these are tough odds. All right, so we'll do an in-store audience. The shirt better beard or me better beard? Me better beard. Nice. See, Jeremiah just won. All right, we got three votes over here in the shop, so I win. <laughs> Um, so now that we have this, we've got our first stage. This next stage, as you can see, is a lot shorter, and so it's going to build that bulk towards the head. So as you're stripping this thing, it'll actually dart and dive and really make some cool movement, um, which is kind of the reason I've, I've toyed around with this and messed around with it enough to, to get it to try to do that. At first, I would tie one continuous body, and it would fish fine, but it wouldn't really dart the way I wanted it to. So by slowly tapering up, building a big bulky head, you get that darting motion, um, which just drives predatory fish crazy. Like walking the dog with the czar spook is about as deadly as it gets. Um, I like to think this is a close second place, just like the shirt was. Um, all right, <laughs> same step. We're gonna go chenille and polar chenille. A lot shorter this time, we don't have to go crazy, but the same, same steps still apply. So get in here. Pull these uh, fibers off, expose that bare stem, and then you can tie it in really close. Spencer thinks he's gonna uh, tie one up and try it for pike. I'd love to see pictures of that. So tag me in that, at Jeremiah Superspay on Instagram. I would love to see that. Um, show me pictures. And any of these, you get a salmon with this big old nasty comet hanging out of his mouth, I wanna see that. So. Yeah, definitely. Love seeing those flies in fish's face. That what that's why we're doing all this, right? All right, so tie both of those pieces in. I'm gonna back it all the way up towards my craft fur here. And now I am gonna come in here and give it a little chop. So make sure this stuff is clean. Alright. So now this is where it gets a little So this fly is called the bearded shirt. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the bearded shirt. I'll take it. So, all right, so we're going to come in here and we're going to do a little tricky step. So to kind of create that cool head on the front, um, you can see this guy here. Whoa, where's that guy at? All right, 
So the blue comes from all the way towards the hook back over. Um, and what I want to do here is actually tie in material facing forward, like some funky flavor saver in the front. It's called the Donald Trump. Nice. We're going to go full, full in the front here. Um, so we got our fluorescent blue. Like I said, once this stuff comes together, it is absolutely beautiful. There you go. Much better. So we're going to pull a big chunk of this off. And I'm going to do a little bit more than uh, when I first did it because I want a little more bulk towards the front. So get in here. Get you a nice piece. All right. I got a pretty good chunk here. Give it a chop. Whenever I'm cutting this stuff, I want to go as close to the base as possible. So that way, whenever I'm, I'm using my next material, I don't have to worry about the fuzz from my last lazy cut. So get in here. Once again, same thing. We're going to take out the under fur of the uh, craft fur here. All right. Get all that junk out. So now we're going to do a quick measurement here. I want this stuff to kind of coat all the way through, um, but I'm okay with it not being perfectly even. By having it a little bit offset, it's going to help with the movement here. So I've got... <laughs> it's a huge chunk. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I know stripus. Um, so we're going to tie this in facing forward. All right. And I'm going to wrap back, covering this stuff. And like Every once in a while I'm going to come in, I'm going to really crank down on it just to make sure that thing isn't going anywhere. Now, you can just wrap your stuff over it, but I'm going to come in here and give it some chops. We buy these sharp scissors for a reason. we got to use them. All right. All right, wrap that in, make sure it's all coated. Bingo. All right, so we're going to take these and match them up, make sure these fibers are fine. I just keep hearing a random laugh from Matt every now and then, so I'm, I'm hoping you guys are killing it over in the comment section. All right, so we got that. We're going to spin it. Come here with the brush. Mr. Craven says he ties uh, some clousers. Those for oh, is this Charlie Craven? Who, no. Which Craven is that? It's a Hosh Craven. Nice. Well, awesome, man. I've tried a lot of clousers. I really like jigged clousers um, in this for these guys. The same color combination. Um, are you fishing for East Coast or West Coast stripe us? We got a bunch of fly fishing kids in here from our Summit High School fishing club, fly fishing club. And they're tying maniacs. So the next generation of awesome tires is coming in. All right, get in there. Make sure you got a few wraps in there. And I, like I said, I want to build up a little bit of bulk here. So make sure you wrap it kind of close. That might have been a little too close. Getting a little overzealous here. We might have to uh, start a short second stream for your slow time. I'm not Matt, so it's just... <laughs> Alright, this is going to be junk here. We're going to deal with it though. We'll just start another one really quick. Uh, Mr. Craven's fishing the CA Delta. Nice, man. I fish as well. Alright, so you notice I wrapped back on that material, um, which is fine. We want to have a little bit bulkier up here. So now when I tie in this crafter brush, it's going to build a little bit more bulk, and it's going to create that head a little more umph to it. It's going to be a little crazier up front. We have a bunch of guys on the East Coast. Uh, Mustard X Tiger asks, what's your opinion on a good budget spay rod? And I, we're going to hold for like 40 seconds. Stop right there. I'll restart a new insta stream so we can finish this fly out because they cap you. I'm going to take this fly out, put the other one on. All right, folks, we're done. <laughs> uh, we trapped some fibers in there. 
Oh, your fiber trap. This one's your other one's still going. But all right, cool, cool. So, so. you guys are still around. The Insta guys are gone. Oh, they're back. All right, everybody's back. Let's do oh, this. Everybody's back. I'll try to tie faster and not talk as much and all that stuff. So, back with the crafter. <laughs> Come in here. Give this quick tie in. We're going to do a couple wraps of this stuff. Uh, we don't want to go crazy with it. All right, just a couple wraps, and this is going to give it a little bit of body. I'm 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 getting fired by by Mr. Jordan Wilcher. It's all right. Nice. We're going to have to take over. Perfect. <laughs> Tampa Fly Girl loves your hat. Thank you very much. They are available. <laughs> we have Alaska. Sweet. All right, so that's going to be it for those. Super duper spay from Mr. Bamboo Fly Guy. Nice. <laughs> I know this is weird, guys. No, no spay flies here. No spray flies. No. It'll be a Jeremiah Super Streamer. <laughs> super Streamer. All right, get in there, give it a chop. And now this is kind of the tricky part. So what I like to do, whoa, is Everyone. almost knock everything apart. Pull this back. Make sure you have enough eye space here. So I'm going to pull these fibers back and create that kind of bullet head. Um, so we're good there. Make sure it's wrapped in. And I'm going to do my whip finish now. So I've got those crazy materials coming here. <laughs> All right. Sure, Terry, you can apply for my job. <laughs> All right, so we're properly whipped. This thing's looking wild now and mangy, but we're gonna make it look pretty. All right, so we've got that piece there. Pull these fibers back. And I'm gonna kind of pinch these fibers up. So we'll start to get that bait fish looking head. I crowded the eye, of course. You like a hair stack or something? Yeah, we're good, yeah. we're good. We'll stick. 20 pound fluorocarbon through that, no problem. Next step is gonna be the eyes. Um, so these next few steps are gonna be kind of combined and it really helps create that form and kind of creates your, your perfect fish silhouette. So from here we're gonna stick the eyes on and then after that we're gonna do the UV resin. We're gonna hold everything in place. I'm gonna come in here, get my eye in place. Mr. Whiskey Ryan, it, it could be a pike fly if you wanted. He's tying this one for stripers. You know, I've caught largemouth bass here, um, stripers, just about anything that eats bait fish is going to chomp on this thing. Um, so come in here with your thin, and I'm going to do this right now to kind of tame this fiber back. So I'm going to come in here, give it a little. Some main tamer? Yeah, and I'm going to sweep it back, kind of picking it up and moving it back. By doing this, you're kind of kind of dig it into the, the fibers a little bit, which is what we want to do. <laughs> All right, so once you have a little bit done, come in here and you can kind of adjust this to exactly what you want. So I'm going to kind of, kind of push it up a little bit. It's going to create that more of a bullet shape. Now I can zap it. And by doing that, it freezes right in that spot. And I know it's going to be that style from here on out. Um, so because I pushed it in the fibers, I want to make sure the stuff is curing all the way through. So make sure you get a good zap on there. All right, so we've got just the base done right now. We're going to do the bottom as well. And then we're going to start going crazy with this stuff. So move it back. Now right now I'm noticing a bunch of these random fibers because I super crowded the eye. <laughs> so come in here, give it some glue. I use thin here because I kind of want it to, to seep into these little spots. Um, I'm excited about the light. Ooh, you like that? Um, rechargeable, man. It's the best part. I'll have to make sure that you don't steal that at the end of the night. No guarantees. All right, hit that and zap it. So I feel like a lot of uh, either epoxy or UV resin flies don't take into the consideration that you have a hook gap here. And um, the more you fill this up, the less likely it is that fish is going to get the tasty carbon part there. So whenever I'm tying this guy, I'll kind of tie it 
with the UV resin, kind of like a horseshoe. Where's the camera at? Kind of like a horseshoe. So around the fly this way, not around the fly this way. So by doing that, you're going to have a really coated eye so you can fire this thing into bridge pylons and it's not going to pop off. But you don't have to worry about um, reducing your gap in that hook. And the B10S is about as big of a gap as you can get. We're going to come in here. By using the, the thin first, you can really manipulate this stuff and put it exactly where you want. Uh, the white material, that was your craft fur brush again? Yeah, craft fur brush. Yeah. So it's really easy when you're doing this to turn it upside down and let it create a little bubble there. Uh, so it's going to start pulling away from that material and really create a cool domed look uh, without having to do anything besides turn your vise. So give that a quick zap. We're looking good. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. So get in here, coat your eye, and then drag it into your other materials. All right. So I'm going to make sure that thing's moving around. I'm going to turn it upside down and blast it. There you go. And so by coating your eyes and everything, like the eyes will have a little bit of adhesive. Usually I'll tie maybe a little bit of Zappa Gap or Zappa Goo if I'm not doing the resin. But with the resin, you don't have to worry about it. Um, it's coated in there. It's encapsulated. And the last step, the very end, I just do one all the way around just to make sure uh, I kind of get the look I want. It's just nice and smooth. It tapers in. Hopefully I'm not keeping up anybody past their bedtime. Just me. Oh, just, just Matt. That doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. Pushing it back. Making it look good. Push it back. All right. That's fine. We're going to give it a last zap and call it good. Uh-oh. All right. There you go. The... Mr. Master Baitfish. Any questions? Anybody? Yeah, that's a super crowded eye if you can't tell there. That's going to be a fun one. So a good one is to take your bodkin when you're done. And uh, if you're like me and you crowd the eye of your hook because you don't know what to do if it doesn't have a return on there, um, you heat this up to the center of the earth and you poke it right through and it burns away any material and uh, you have a nice spot to fit your tip it through or you can just tie it with plenty of eye like you're supposed to. Carl and Spencer, they love it, says it looks great. They like your technique, Dennis the fly box says. Thank you. Thank Spacey you very much. gives you two thumbs up. Nice. Tell him I give him one of these. Shaka. <laughs> Let's see here. Where's the W? No. There we go. Cool. All right. So, catch fish on these flies. It's in pictures. All right, guys. We're going to uh, shut it out for the night. Thanks, Jeremiah, for coming out and uh, spending some time with us. Have a good one.